Hi, today I'm going to share with you my beginner's approach to using Blender to design a box for 3D printing. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And I've done several videos now about how to use Tinkercad, which is a free online design tool, to make custom designs for 3D printing. But there's only so far a tool like Tinkercad can take you. And if you want to do more sophisticated things like sculpting, you need to step up to a more complex tool. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using Blender as my 3D modeling software. It's also a free download on the internet. And basically what I've learned is the trade-off for getting a more powerful tool is it's a lot more complicated to use. And something even simple somehow isn't as simple as it should be. So that's why I'm going to share with you my beginner's journey. One of the things I found when I was trying to find out references about how to do what I wanted to do is that sometimes the experts who are truly expert they use a lot of shortcuts and hotkeys that they take for granted that you know but I didn't know them so when I tried to do the same thing I saw them do it didn't work for me so I'm going to try to show you my very basic approach probably a pretty inefficient approach and I'm sure many of you will have a quicker way to do uh, what I'm going to be doing and I'd love for you to share that with me but I'm just going to show you what I know how to do so far. So my beginner's project is this simple 3D box. It has a simple lid. It has a flange inside the box that keeps the lid from sinking down in further than it should. And I have this little interesting figure on the top. This is a crystal llama. It's a piece of back bling from Fortnite because I was going to be using the clear resins, I thought it would be a, a cool thing to put on the top. So, But you could put anything on that you're interested in. There's many free files available, as you know, on the internet. So this is kind of a combination of something really basic and something cool that you can download. And I'm going to show you how I made this in this episode. The Crystal Llama is a reward in Fortnite for winning a particular game called High Stakes Getaway. And if you win it once, you get green, three times red and five times you get the crystal version. There are several versions available for free download on Thingiverse. I picked this one by BME Mike. When you first open Blender, you get this setup here. It comes with a camera and a light. I'm not gonna use those, so I'm just going to select them and delete them. I'll keep this cube, however. So now I have to set my units, and by default, it's metric and one unit equals one meter, and that's way too big for what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go in and make it 0 0.001, which is a millimeter, one, one thousandth of a meter, and I'm going to set length to millimeter. And now I'll be working in millimeters instead of meters. My grid units, you can see, are now way too big. I'm going to need to change that as well, but first let's just confirm that we're in millimeters and here we have our default cube with dimensions of two millimeters each of the three dimensions. You can change the grid units here in the overlay window and I'll change that to 0 .001 as well. So now I see a grid that has the two millimeters that represent the size of my box. If you can't see this window I'm referencing that has the dimensions in it, uh, type N in object mode, you're in object mode right now, and that will pop up this properties window. I can use these dimensions now to change the size, and I've decided I want a 50 millimeter cube for my basic box. So I just go in and type over this so that each of the three dimensions is 50 millimeters long. I use the scroll button on my mouse to zoom out, and I can see it, but I see that the scale is 25, and that's because my new box is 25 times bigger than my two millimeter box. And that's not very useful to me, so I want to reset that. So I can go into the object menu down two levels, or I can type Control A, and that means apply, and you get this window. When I click scale, it's just going to reset this box as my new baseline and turn the scale to one. 
Now I want to create a box that's going to represent the interior of my box. And I do that by adding a new cube. And my goal is to have two and a half millimeter sides and bottom. And I then have to take five millimeters off of the X dimension and the Y dimension, but only two and a half millimeters off the Z dimension because I'm going to have that box flush with the top so it's open to the top. All of this resizing is happening around the origin, and that means that this hole is in the center of my box, and I need to move it up so that the opening is flush with the top. So I activate the Move tool, and I'm going to pull on the blue arrow to raise it in the Z dimension. Now, as in most things with Blender, there are many different ways to do any given thing, and the one way is to just do the math and figure out where it needs to be positioned. In general, though, I'm a very visual person. I don't like having to calculate the math. It's just something else to go wrong. So I want to find an alignment tool that will do this for me. But you can see when they are flush, you get this visual effect that kind of says these two surfaces are right on top of each other. There is an alignment tool, however, and here in object mode, a lot of stuff is in this object menu. And if you drill down two layers, there's this alignment tool. I don't find this window to be as intuitive as a lot of other alignment tools. I know I'm moving it in the Z axis, but I have to decide between these positive and negative sides. In my case here, positive is the right choice. If you choose negatives, you'll see that it's aligning it on the bottom. So, um, so that is an option with a little of experimentation. It's probably pretty easy to use. So now all I have to do is turn my inner cube into a hole instead of a solid. And I'm going to do that by using the Bool tool. So if you go to Add-ons, you will see that there are many add-ons available for Blender. You just have to check the ones that you want to be activated. And it's such a long list, the search actually is very helpful. If you type in Bool, it'll show you the Bool tool. Make sure it's checked and active. A very important shortcut to learn is shift Control b pulls up the Bool tool. The order of selection is important. You always pick the influencing object first, the object to be influenced second, and then the operator. In our case, it's difference. And it turns the solid into a hole. The order of selection doesn't really matter in certain operators like union. If you're adding things together, you can just select them as a group or in any order. Now I'm going to add a cube to turn into the lid. And it's down there at the origin. That's where it's creating the object. You need a little bit of a gap in the sides, so I'm doing 44 millimeters on X and Y, and I'm making it 2.5 millimeters thick. Now using the Move tool, I can pull that up out so that I can see it. And um, now I just need to add my llama on top. This, of course, is my pre-existing file that I've downloaded from Thingiverse. It's an STL file, so I use the import function and I go find that in my files and import it. It comes in at the size that the creator had saved it out as. It's obviously too large for my application, so I'm going to need to scale it down. And I want to scale it symmetrically or parametrically or evenly. And between the two scaling tools, it seems like the scale cage is the right thing to use. But I keep trying to just grab the vertices on this box and size it down, which is what you would do in any other application. But I find that I have to zoom in this close and see the, the uh, cursor turn to this circle before I can actually grab one of the vertices. And I've worked with this several times, but it just continues to be very awkward for me to be moving around visually in the 3D viewer and then having to zoom in. And I'm trying to see this in relationship to the size of the box. And it's just not that easy to work with. In the end, what turned out to be easiest for me was basically just to retreat to using the numbers in the property panel. 
So I'm going to use the XYZ scaling numbers. I know it needs to be about quarter, a quarter of the original size, so I'm just going to type in 25%, 0.25 for each one of these. And I have my symmetrically, parametrically resized llama. Now I'm going to position him on the lid. And because it's an irregular shape, I can't just say, oh, it was created around the origin and the box is still around the origin and the lid, so I can just pull him up and he's in place. I want it to visually look correct. So I'm just going to look at a couple of different views here uh, from the top, from the side, and decide what to do with him. Interestingly, when I look at him from the front, he seems to be leaning a little bit to the right, so I'm going to use the rotation tool to make it a little bit more vertical. And then I'm going to look from the sides and from the top and move him around till I like the way it looks. I'm also positioning him on top of the lid, so I want to make sure that I have enough contact between the llama and the lid, but that I don't lose much of his legs in the process, so I adjust that. When I'm satisfied, I select both parts. I pull up the bool tool again, and I say union to combine them into one piece. If I took this lid as it exists now and put it on my box, though, it would obviously just fall down to the bottom of the box because there's nothing to stop it, and that's why I need a flange. Creating the flange is a two-step process, just like making the box. I'm going to create a flat piece and then I'm going to punch a hole in it. And the last step will be to combine that with the box itself. So let's start with that flat piece. I add a cube. The X and Y dimensions are the same as the box, the 50 millimeters, and it's two and a half millimeters thick. Now let's pull that up out of the box so we can see what we're doing and move on to making the hole. In order to stop the lid from falling through, obviously this hole has to be smaller than the size of the lid. So I'm going to add a cube, and I'm going to make its XY dimensions 42 millimeters, so one millimeter on each side, a total of two millimeters smaller than the size of the lid. Unlike the hole in the box, which we have we leave the bottom in the box. In this case, we want to punch a hole all the way through this flange. So the only requirement is that the Z be bigger than the thickness of the piece we're punching a hole in. So I'm going to make it even bigger so it's easy to see. And I'm just going to push it down so that I can visually inspect and see that it's passing all the way through the flange. It's already aligned properly because both pieces were created around the origin. Now I can use the bool tool again, say difference, and punch the hole in. Now all I have to do is basically install the flange. So I use the move tool to push it back down into the box, and I want it to go down in far enough so that my 2.5 millimeter lid sits flush with the top of the box. Once again, I could do the math on this, but I like to do things visually, so I just got it to where I thought it looked right, and I used this measurement tool to check the depth down to the flange, and it was close enough for me. When you add a part like this, it's always important to remember that that part is still a separate piece of the model. Uh, to combine them, you have to select them as we did before. Order doesn't matter here because we're going to be combining them and you pull up the bool tool and you say union and it becomes a single model. So that's all there is to it. You can uh, lower your lid down here and see how it's going to look on the box and make sure the proportions are what you were expecting. And this now, this blender file has two different models in it. It has the box and it has the lid. And I chose to export them as separate files. I did that by checking this selection only box in the export window and saved it out as two separate STLs, the lid and the box. I decided to print this on my Creality printer. It's small enough to fit and I printed both pieces flat on the build plate. 
I'm very comfortable doing that, and I think I get better quality uh, by printing flat when I can. I did auto supports on the lid, and you can see the llama has just a few little supports, primarily for the tail. And because I'm printing flat, I reduced the time of the bottom layers to 35 seconds instead of 50, so it's easier to get them off of the platform. The truth is, everything I've done here, I could have done in Tinkercad and done it more easily, but that isn't really what I'm trying to achieve. Now that I know the basics, I'm going to try to make a box with a sculpted lid, and that's something I could not do in Tinkercad, and I can in Blender. If you want to see how that turns out, please subscribe to my channel.